step two, Bell state measurements one. So let's remind ourselves what Bell states look like. So Bell states are four entangled states, and they can be written in this form in the computational basis. Phi plus is a superposition of 0, 0 and 1, 1. So is phi minus, but with a uh, negative phase between the two. And this is the expression for psi plus and psi minus. We saw that these states are orthonormal. What that means is that if you take the inner product of a st Bell state with itself, for example, phi plus, then you get a 1. It means it is normalized. But if you take an inner product of uh, one of these states with some other state, then you get a zero. For example, the inner product between phi minus and phi plus is zero, and so on. What this means is that we can take any state, any pure state of two qubits, and write it out in the Bell basis. For example, let's consider a general pure two qubit uh, state in the computational basis with probability amplitudes given by alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. We saw in previous lessons how to rewrite this state in the Bell basis. So now it's a superposition of all the four Bell states, where, of course, uh, these uh, probability amplitudes have changed. For example, the probability amplitude for state phi plus is alpha plus beta and so on for the other Bell states. And we have been uh, uh, treating measurements as a question that we ask about the state of our physical system. And the question in this case is, which of the four Bell states is our state in? Is it the state phi plus? Is it the state phi minus, psi plus, or psi minus? This is what the measurement reveals about our system. And usually we, get, we say that we get the answer with some probability. For example, depending on the initial state psi, we might get the answer that the state is uh, phi plus. In this case, it would be with probability, which is the modulus squared of this uh, probability amplitude. This is a very abstract notion of what a measurement actually is, and it's not very useful when it comes to doing calculations. So let's see how to actually implement uh, such, a, such a measurement in terms of a quantum circuit. That will tell us more about what these measurements are actually doing and how we can implement them in a laboratory. So, but before we do that, let's step back a little bit and consider something simpler. Let's look at measurements of a single qubit. And let's, in, let's be particular and say that we want to measure the single qubit in a Pauli Z basis. In the quantum circuit notation, we would write it as this. We've got some input state psi, and then we measure it. This is the symbol for measurement. And here, this little z is just reminding us that we are measuring in the z basis. So what we get is that initially, if the state is some general superposition of 0 and 1 with probability amplitudes alpha and beta, then the measurement can give us a plus 1 outcome with corresponding probability, which is given by the inner product between the initial state and our basis state 0 modulus squared, which is just alpha modulus squared. Or we can get the minus 1 outcome, which is given by the probability given by beta modulus squared, the probability amplitude of the basis state 1. Now, let's try to do a measurement in the x basis. Again, in the quantum circuit notation, it would look like this. We've got our initial state psi, and we're doing a measurement, and now it's in the x basis, which is uh, over here, written by this little x. Again, we are considering some general input state, but in order to be able to uh, determine the probabilities of the different outcomes, we are going to rewrite the state in the x basis. So we have seen that zero is an equal superposition of the plus state and the minus state. And similarly, one is an equal, equal superposition as well, but this time we have a negative phase between plus and minus states. So we can rewrite the initial state in this following form. And from this form, we can easily read out the probabilities of obtaining the plus one outcome of the measurement, which is given by half alpha plus beta, the whole thing modulus squared, and the probability for the minus one outcome. But now, let's 
impose a restriction of our, on ourselves. Let's say that we cannot perform a measurement in the X basis. Let's say we're only allowed to do measurements in the Z basis. What do we do then? Well, we can consider the following quantum circuit. We've got the initial state, and then we do some unitary operation on that state. Here, we are choosing the Hadamard. And then we perform our measurement, but this time in the Z basis. So, we start with the usual initial state, it's a superposition of 0 and 1. But then, after application of the Hadamard gate, we've, we get a new state, which we are denoting Psi plus. And this new state is given in this form. Just to remind you, Hadamard, when it's applied on 0, gives us a plus state, so an equal, equal superposition of 0 and 1. Whereas Hadamard applied to 1 gives us the minus state. And then if we just expand the plus state and the minus state again in the computational basis, we arrive at this form for our state psi plus. And now, because we are doing measurement in the Z basis, again, it's easy to read out the probabilities corresponding to outcomes plus one and minus one. But look, even though here we have a different quantum circuit, we are obtaining the outcomes plus one and minus one with the same probabilities as we had done on the previous slide. So, what this shows is that there are two ways of implementing a Pauli X measurement. We can do it directly, writing it like this, or if we want, we can just measure in the Z basis, but then we have to apply some unitary transformation on our uh, pure state Psi. So, why is that? Well, the clue is in the uh, probabilities. If you look at the probability of the plus one outcome in, in this scheme, where we are measuring uh, the X basis directly, then it's given by the inner products of Psi and the plus state modulus squared. If we do it in our other scheme, where we are using the Hadamard followed by a Z measurement, then it's given by the corresponding expression here. Now it's the inner product between the state Psi prime, so this is our initial state after we apply Hadamard to it, and the inner product is with uh, uh, plus state. And then uh, what we get is Psi times Hadamard times zero. So what we are getting is really, if we are comparing these two probabilities, we see that this Psi state in a, with, uh, has an inner product with a plus, and plus is just written as Hadamard applied to a zero state. So that's what we are doing here. So what we are really uh, doing is we are asking what unitary takes me from a plus state to a zero state or from a zero state to a plus state. And we already know this unitary, it's the Hadamard. Similarly for the minus one outcome, we look at the different probabilities and what we get is again, we go from a minus state to a, a one state via the Hadamard transformation. So the Hadamard transforms our desired basis of measurement, which in this case is a Pauli X, into a Pauli Z basis. Now, how to do a Bell measurement using only Pauli Zs? Well, we have two qubits, so we're going to need two Pauli measurements, and we are going to need to apply some a two qubit unitary before we actually measure the state. So the question now is, how do we find this unitary? Well, we know one thing, that the unitary should, when applied to a state psi plus, should give us a zero, zero. When applied to state phi minus, it should give us state one, zero, and so on and so forth. So this is our rule of transforming from our Bell basis into our computational basis. And if we can do that, then we can just measure in the Z uh, basis. In the same way we saw how it worked for the Pauli X basis, we had to find a unitary that transforms from the X basis into the Z basis, which was given by Hadamard. Here, we are looking for a more general unitary because it's acting on two qubits. So, without further ado, this is the circuit that actually achieves our desired uh, transformation. It's given by a C node gate, which is given uh, by this two qubit gate, followed by Hadamard on the first qubit, and then two measurements in the Z basis. And what happens that if we get 
uh, outcomes 0, 0, which, which corresponds to plus 1, plus 1, then we know that we have a Bell state phi plus. And similarly for all the uh, other three possible measurement outcomes. And each individual measurement outcome represents uniquely a Bell state measurement. So, this is true in general, that any measurement basis can be implemented by Pauli Z measurements and a suitable unitary applied before we measure our qubits. And this trick is very useful, particularly in quantum computation and also in quantum communication. And in the next step, we will actually see how we can do this in real life using linear optics.